Hello, my friends, John Peterson from the Arlington Institute, and we're here to introduce you to our next speaker for Transition Talks coming up on the 25th of September. Dr. James Tamio from uh, Oregon is going to be with us. Hello, Jim. It's nice to have you with us today. Thank you, John. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, uh, Dr. Demio is an is an extraordinary guy who has spent his whole lifetime studying the work of Wilhelm Reich, who was a real pioneer in physics and understanding the nature of reality. And as uh, those of you who follow us regularly know, that uh, we're very interested in this new world that's emerging and how it might operate in a different kind of ways. And it's clear that there's going to be some new technologies and new science underneath this new world. And so we're excited to have Jim Demio be with us this uh, in September to talk about some of these kinds of things. So Jim, give us a little background on yourself quickly, and then uh, we can talk a little bit about what you're gonna, uh, what your, your presentation is about. Okay. Um, well, basically, I, uh, I learned about Reich's work, Willem Reich's work, when I was an undergraduate student in the university. I uh, studied environmental science and, uh, and then later went to the University of Kansas, where I, uh, I got a master's degree and a PhD, where my graduate research uh, was focused upon experimental evaluation of Reich's work at a, at a fairly high level. And uh, basically, through a number of experiments and, and uh, evaluations, we proved that Reich was correct on many, many major things. And um, one of the focuses of my work since back then and since has been this whole issue of energy in space, energy in the atmosphere, and energy in the human system in li within living creatures. And uh, Reich felt he had discovered a specific bioenergy. He called it the orgone energy to relate it to or organic living material. And uh, he felt that this was uh, connected with human health and sickness in terms of how this energy moved and functioned within the body. In a way, it's similar uh, in some respects to uh, the, the acupuncture theory, where they talk about an energy that flows uh, th through the body. But Reich was, uh, he wasn't uh, interested so much in the meridians as in the whole body expressions. And uh, he developed a device called the Orgone Energy Accumulator, which he claimed pulled this energy out of the atmosphere and concentrated it to a higher level within its interior. Uh, he got in trouble with the law over that. Uh, he was accused of all kinds of nasty things and slandered by the media, mainstream media. Still is, as far as I can tell. But uh, I, I objectively researched this device, the Orgone Energy Accumulator, and uh, I was not alone in that. There were some other doctors and, and PhD students who had been doing the same and uh, together there's quite a large body of evidence to show that Reich was correct, that the human body has a, a, all other life as well, but we have a, a bioenergy system in us that pulsates and we have a charge of this energy in our body. And uh, if that charge gets too weak, we become susceptible Right, called the energetic charge in the in the body, the resistance to disease. In other words, what we would the the term immune system wasn't developed in, in Reich's time. They just called it the resistance to disease. And and uh, he it was his observation that when the charge of the body got too low uh, or got contracted in certain areas uh, inappropriately, that that um, people would get sick. And so the orgone accumulator was designed to help boost up that immunological charge, if you will, uh, inside the body. And uh, I, did, I didn't ever do human being studies except for my own personal self. I built orgone accumulator for myself and sat in it and verified all these subjective effects. My health has been pretty good all my life from using this thing. 
and um, but there were German universities that did double blind studies on this, uh, showing that it stimulated the parasympathetic nervous system, which is uh, it's the the relaxation system of our body. Uh, and uh, and I started doing experimental research on the physical properties inside the organ accumulator, which Reich also did that. He proved that there was a an electrostatic charging influence that could be measured with electroscopes. I verified that. Uh, he found that uh, it would create a slight warming within itself in violation of the second law of thermodynamics. I did a very extensive multi-year study on that. Um, prove that it was true. Let's start kind of big here, if I, if I might, here a second and say, uh, is this kind of the equivalent of an ether uh, in, in, you know, physics terms? Well, that's, that's my impression. It was Reich's impression too. He, he said that the, the uh, discarding of the ether theory by modern science was a catastrophe. That, that mm -hmm. was almost a direct quote. And uh, I, I did research on this when I was uh, throughout my life, my life's work on the ether of space. And what I found is that there were scientists who actually did detect the ether, who proved that it was a real thing and that they were just simply ignored, kind of swept right. aside in this uh, post-World War II enthusiasm for Einstein. Yeah. Well, that's uh, very interesting because Einstein said that if... Uh, anyone really uh, proved that there was an ether, then all of his theories would be uh, obsolete. Uh, and that they, right. were all built, they were all built upon the assumption that there was no ether. And so what you're uh, working with here and suggesting and gonna talk to us about is the, possi the distinct possibility of the beginning of a whole new worldview uh, about how life works. And that then translates, as I understand it, into these different kind of products or these different kind of devices that each of which has really rather extraordinary kind of benefits. I mean, you've shown uh, that mice that have cancer uh, get better if they're in these devices. Is that correct? Well, Reich, Reich showed a threefold increase in the lifespan of cancer mice when they were charged inside the organ accumulator, small little mouse sized accumulators, uh, and they would charge them up for about 30 to 40 minutes a day. And they outlived the control group of the same kind of cancer mice uh, by three times. Now, that's incredible. I mean, today, yeah. somebody will show 3% increase and it becomes international yeah, right. news, but 300% Reich right. was seeing and it was ho oh, hum, you know, ignore it. There's nothing to see here, you know, crazy kind of things. And other scientists have verified this. Right. Other scientists right. Have, have done those same mouse experiments and verified it. So this is a real breakthrough area that's starting to say the reality doesn't work the same way that we've all been taught in school and that we've assumed that it works. Now, also, uh, Reich had these cloud busters which were able to change the atmosphere and the composition of the atmosphere get rid of clouds uh generate rain other types of things talk to us you're going to talk about that as well yes uh this was actually uh, the subject of my master's thesis at the university of kansas it was a two-year study i built one of these devices and we tested it out on the uh rainfall and cloud cover patterns over the entire state of Kansas. And it showed effects over the, the whole state of Kansas. We would work it on a particular day uh, and uh, look, at, look at the rainfall and the cloud cover patterns. And we're able to show these large peaks in the increased cloud cover, increased rainfall, uh, proving that it worked. Also did a study on cloud dissipation and it showed uh, statistically significant effects and. Um, but, you know, like so much else that's very important, it uh, sort of got discarded and ignored. I was lucky to get out of the university with my scalp for having verified <laughs> Reich. You know, there's wow. a joke. One of my, one of my uh, mentors, uh, who I, I, a dear guy I, I love very much, uh, Robert Nunley, uh, he said, well, uh, they, they've agreed to give you your PhD if you leave town and never come back. You know? <laughs> wasn't that bad but wow. uh, it, 
anyway, we're, that's, we're uh, happy. We're happy you're going to come to Berkeley Springs on the 25th of uh, September and uh, and be with us and talk about this. I mean, the whole notion of this cloud buster is a relatively small, seemingly simple to build device that uh, if you think about this, if you can affect the whole state of uh, of Kansas with this thing and predictably, I mean, somehow program it, I presume that there's some kind of a way to um, organize it or direct it or other such things. I mean, this is yes. amazing. This yeah, it is. Now, right now I'm trying to get some people in California to, uh, uh, to help me organize a project down there, but it's like, you know, looking for hen's teeth. I mean, uh, <laughs> very, very difficult, well, but I'm always hopeful. Yes, of course. And, uh, so uh, Reich also had a device that could measure uh, bodily energy, uh, if I understand it correctly, right? Well, he developed a device called the Orgon Field Meter or the Orgon Energy Field Meter. And uh, there's actually a guy in Canada who made a replication of that as a small solid state device. And uh, he calls it the Experimental Life Energy Meter. And, uh, uh, so it, it works. It, it will show uh, uh, areas of your body where you have a higher or lower charge and you can actually measure liquids or fluids or, or water to, uh, to show the different uh, strength of yeah. the energy charge in water. And this is something I devoted a lot of time to using uh, ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy, uh, showing that uh, if you charge water distilled water up in a uh, orgone accumulator that it would develop this very powerful ultraviolet absorption and a very powerful blue fluorescence oh, so wow. sometimes people look at blue waters in nature and okay. uh, they get a feeling there's something really uh, wonderful about that and they're right because this is the kind of water that's charged up with this same life energy well, this is really quite wonderful because what we're going to get a chance to he hear about on the 25th uh, is this, these breakthrough spaces, areas in, in terms of how you understand the very essence of how our reality works. And it is, uh, I would argue, that bubbling up the emergence of these ideas that ultimately come together to form a whole new framework for uh, understanding our reality and who we are and how we, you know, what capabilities that we all have. And we're really looking forward to having you come and be with us. And so uh, that'll be on the 25th of September and here in Berkeley Springs. Uh, and uh, you can get all complete information about it at transitiontalks.org. And uh, it'll be, it's a Saturday afternoon and we'll spend the whole afternoon, four or five hours, as a matter of fact. So you get plenty of time to ask questions and uh, learn as much about this as you, as you can. And it'll also be live streamed. So it doesn't make any difference where you are in the world. You'll be able to access this for two weeks after, um, watch it live during the program, but also access it for two weeks afterwards. So. Jim, we're really looking forward to having you with us. It's going to be a really good time. And we're going to explore the kind of the leading edge of uh, science and physics and the essence of, of how this whole world works. And it's going to be great. Well, I'm looking forward to it. It sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. So thanks. And we look forward to seeing you all. All righty. Bye-bye. All right.